I have a man who's got probably the most important job on his hands during the course of the day. He is the judge of the Obedience Championship, Andy Anderson. Andy, do you look for anything particular when you go out there? I mean, what exactly are you looking for? Just a good, happy dog which works close to the, the heel without any weaving. No preconceived ideas no about preconceived which... Ideas. What's your favourite dog? Do you prefer the Shepherds shepherd. or the... You do prefer the Shepherds? I prefer a Shepherd, but you can't... Uh, you judge the dog which comes in, not the, the one you fancy. Well, you've got a tremendous amount of work to do. I know you're going to need good luck because you've got to walk probably a few miles out yeah. there. Very best of luck, and thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. So, that's the competition that we're going to be looking at today, the Obedience Championship. And with me, as usual, my co-presenter, Muriel Pierce, who's had a champion or two herself. Muriel, we keep on getting the same people here. So many, each year, we get the same people with perhaps different dogs. Yeah. But that shows a certain consistency. How long does it take to train a dog? Well, you know, Peter, there are some people who claim they can train a dog in five minutes. But as the late Professor Joad would say, it depends what you mean by train. And I, while I admit that you can dominate a dog to do something simple in under five minutes, it would take an experienced handler at least six months to train a dog up to the standards these we're, we're going to see today. Yeah. But, you know, looking down the list of dogs in the competition today, we have last year's winner, Gemma Dean Sheppy, uh, no doubt back again to try for the double. We've also got uh, Sharo Bindai, who w won this class yes. in 1981. But um, I'm going to stick my neck out this year, and I'm going to go for Sylvia Bishop's dog, Magic Sunday. He's a little working sheepdog, a cracking little worker. He uh, came here for the first time last year and was second in the lineup. And I feel that if anybody's going to win, they've got to beat that dog. Uh -huh. So um, it depends, of course, on the competition, how it goes. And in the end, it depends on the scent, which is going to be the last exercise as usual. And everybody would be on their toes. So we'll just have to wait and see and keep our fingers crossed. Well, Muriel, it would be nice for a change if your tip was right. I'm <laughs> sure it's going to be absolutely hopeless. You've yeah. never had one right yet. Yes, I know. <laughs> We've got a lot of work to do. We've got to cast our expert, or my inexpert eye, over the competitors. Let's get on with the competition. And the first test is the send away, where the handler sends the dog away, in this case to that triangle of cones. Rather a difficult uh, point for the animal to identify with. It's not a square. And the first one we're seeing is Magic Sunday with Sylvia Bishop. This, of course, Muriel's tip. And this is a cracking send away, Peter, but unfortunately Sylvia was a little bit late with her command and the dog is just out of the box. So there'll certainly be faults for that. Not many, but there'll be some. This exercise isn't over until the dog is recalled and Sylvia will right, be told to turn, walk across the arena and then recall the dog, as you see. Right, sir. That looks pretty good. That should get almost full marks, I feel. Left, sir. Hold. Thank you. And it was, in fact, one fault on that send away for overshooting the box. As we now look at Sherobin Dye, Steve Stevens. And Dye, if you remember, Peter, won in 1981. And Steve, of course, is a very relaxed handler. But I sometimes wonder, over the years, because the send away has changed from a send away to a send to, and what some of these dogs would do if there were no markers to guide them out. And in fact, that was a perfect send away. It came to a perfect recall as well for Steve Stevens. So excellent from Sherobin Dye. We now look at Zandoas Houdini. And this five and a half year old dog, oh dear, he's going to have to restart that dog and will lose quite a lot of marks for the second try. Great shame it did that because that is a pretty good send away but picked up 20 faults on that particular movement. This now is Jay Jade with Frank Smith. What a beautiful send away. Look at that straight line that that dog's taking. Oh, Frank must take the blame for that. He, his command was much too slow to drop that dog. Well, at least Frank Smith doesn't seem too unhappy about it. Just lost two points for that as we look at Sonny Jim. And this is Beryl Kelsall with her eight-year-old working sheepdog. Usually does a good... Oh dear, oh dear, no. He's miles out of the box today. He's going to lose a lot of marks here. And in fact, for that deviation, lost eight and a half points. As we now go to Benjo Dusty Bin with Ted Tewksbury. 
Now, Ted was ill most of last year, and so therefore the dog has not had very much training. But he hasn't forgotten it, obviously. He's doing very well. Very good send away, losing just one point there. As we now go to the retrieve, which is a fairly self-explanatory exercise, the object which you see being thrown there, this time by Sylvia Bishop from Magic Sunday. And Magic Sunday has to go and collect it, and well too. And this is an example, Peter, of a perfect retrieve with a fast run out, a clean pickup, and a fast coming in to present, which is perhaps slightly too close. The judge didn't think so. That's full marks for Magic Sunday. We now look at Gemadine Sheppy with Ernie Cooper. You ready? Last year's winner, of course. The retrieve articles, you will notice, are very soft today and therefore a great temptation for the dogs to mouth them. I believe the Hastings Club spent many hours making them with obviously very great effect. That's a good retrieve. Take it. Finish. But Judge Andy Anderson found half a point's fault there. This now is Ben Trooper with Jay Abrams. Now, Ben is a nine-year-old dog and has been to Cruft before, so he's an experienced campaigner. That looks quite a fast run out. Uh, pushing, perhaps, slightly on the pickup. A nice return, but, oh dear, that present is far too close. And that little collection of faults costs three points to Ben Trooper. This is Speedy Kid, coming a long way, all the way from North Scotland. Yes, indeed. Their first time at Crufts. This pair come from Fort William, as you say. And a nice, steady tot dog. I haven't seen him work before. But for, for his first time here, he appears to be going very well indeed. No mouthing of that article, as you can see. Again, a slightly close present. And that performance was worth just one and a half faults as Judge Andy Anderson cast his very expert eye over Benjo Dusty Ben. Half a point's fault and much amusement for the audience. Proves that everything at Crofts isn't that serious. And Dusty Bin thoroughly enjoying it as well. We're now going to look at the distant control exercise. And for the exercise this year, Andy Anderson has decided that the handler will be a good distance away, the length of a cricket pitch, in fact. And he's placing down beside the first competitor, as we look there, the ruler, the marker, by which he'll judge whether the animal moves too far forward or backwards during the course of the exercise. The handler then moves away and gives six instructions to the animal the animal, of course, must obey without hesitation. We're looking, of course, again at Magic Sunday and Sylvia Bishop, who's just taking her position. And in this exercise, Peter, you must appreciate that the dog must have total concentration on the handler because of the noise coming from this uh, rather large area. Any extra commands, of course, are penalised. And that's a very fine example of how to do distant control. A lovely performance there from Magic Sunday. Your tip's doing very well, Muriel. Oh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. And now they're in full marks for Magic Sunday and Sylvia Bishop. This is One. Bill of the Wisp. Dang. Dang. Yes, what a shame. I feel sure, Peter, that this dog is not reacting to the lady because he's, she is not the usual handler. And a gentleman's voice is so different from a lady's. With all the noise, it's a wonder this dog is doing anything. And another hesitation there, costing 12 points in all. Very unfortunate, but a jolly good try. As we move on to Rillenbrook Ross with June Naylor. Now, although this is Ross's first time at Crufts, you may remember that June competed in this competition for many years with that wonderful dog, Fleet. Won, and in fact, it? she did win it, Peter, in 1979. Four. Ross, are you back? 
a rather unfortunate arm extension could lose her half a mark here. It's a rather a threat to the dog not to come forward, isn't it? And the judge thought so too. Half a point lost as we look at Mary Ray with Mr. Chips. Now Mary, of course, does an arm signal for the stand instead of a command. Each competitor has a choice of whether to use a command or an arm signal. This dog is interesting, Peter, because he's an agility dog and has won many, many prizes in agility, which proves that you don't have to keep to one thing. You can do two things. And isn't he doing well in obedience? A little bit of anticipation, though, which will have cost him two points. This is Limewell Flint with Christine Smeaton. And Flint today, I feel, looks a little unhappy, possibly because he's not used to all this noise. Yes, you see, he's not completely sat, Peter, is he? Doesn't appear to be, does he, at all? Hasn't quite made the position. No. That's a better one. And surprisingly, full marks for Flint. As we go on to the heel work, the longest and most arduous of the exercises that the dogs have to get involved with during the championship. Six minutes of intense concentration for dog, handler and judge. And obviously this is really an excellent performance, setting the pace of the competition and going into the lead with just one and a half faults. This is Sherobin Dye with Steve Stevens. Now Dye is a steady worker in complete contrast to Sylvia's dog Sonny. That is the first position which he has performed really well. Steve, of course, a very relaxed handler. Nothing ever bothers him. Nor the dog either. Four and a half points lost only. Frank Smith again now with JJ coming up to the third position to sit. And here again, this very exuberant dog with an instant response to Frank's command. The pick up again also was very, very good. Excellent heel work indeed from JJ. Just one fault on the whole performance. This is Gemadine Sheppy. Another contrasting style of worker. Um, it's very difficult to fault a dog like this because he doesn't do anything wrong. In fact, he's already done one thing wrong. He missed the first position. What's he going to do with the second? Second position comes. Two. Bounce. Looks pretty faultless to oh, me, Oh, that, that was all right, that one, yes. Ruined his chances, though. Sixteen and a half faults overall were lost by Gemadine Sheppey on this exercise. Great shame for them. Next one again, we're going to see Flint, Limewell Flint. Now Flint, we are watching going through these weaving poles where the handler must go in and out and the dog follow completely without having to be pushed round. He is doing this exceptionally well. All heel work, of course, worked at slow, yep. medium and fast pace. We're watching the slow pace, obviously, at the moment. Normal. Very attentive performance, this mural. Isn't it? And a good left turn. Oh, yes, she's doing very well. Well enough to only lose one and a half faults on the heel work. This is Domino Double with Irene Stapley. Again, another first time for this dog and this handler at Crufts. He has done exceptionally well during the year, having gained the three tickets necessary to make him an obedience champion. He's a very neat and steady dog, handled, I feel, in a very calm and unfussy manner. And the handler, of course, never been to Crufts before, so a very creditable performance, two and a half faults only, as the audience applaud the heel work, and also, welcome to the arena, a very important visitor indeed to the Obedience Championships, the President of the Kennel Club, His Royal Highness Prince Michael of Kent. And he's seen here chatting with 
our judge, Andy Anderson, a very proud moment for Andy. He's taking a well-earned breather, I think, at the moment. And Prince Michael now being led across the arena by Norman Hills, who's the chief obedience steward at these championships, to take their seats to watch some more of this competition. What a marvellous competition it is too. And during the next two exercises, the two minute sit and the ten minute down, no points were lost by any animal. So the position after six tests has Magic Sunday, just in the lead with two and a half faults. Jay Jade, Speedy Kid and Limewell Flint of them brittle all have three points faults. Domino Double and Sherobin Die have four and a half. Any of those can win it as we go on to the scent discrimination. And this is where the whole competition will be decided. The pattern of the cloths are a Y pattern. Two cloths are placed in that pattern. They're decoys with decoy scents. And the judge, Andy Anderson, handles two other cloths, one of which will be placed in the pattern. The other will be given to the handler. And we're going to look first of all at the leader of the competition, Magic Sunday and Sylvia Bishop. Two and a half points lost so far. If it does this perfectly, it will win the Obedience Championship of 1984. Unfortunately, the pressure on Sylvia now is absolutely intense. And if she can keep calm and relaxed, then this dog has every chance. So this is the moment. Sonny can win the competition by picking up that red cloth that just wandered straight over. Ignored it, rather. Yes, I, I've got a feeling that Sylvia is now very uptight. The dog can sense it and is, in fact, getting no help from his handler whatsoever. No, you see, it doesn't mean anything to him. Certainly exploring the pattern, but not really sniffing the cloths, a little confused. There is a time limit on this exercise. So far, he's lost no points. Come he can on, still son. get it. Not oh, no, Sonny, that's the wrong one. Oh, you, bad luck, Sylvia. You can hear the disappointment from the crowd. A great groan Thank went you. up. We know what Sylvia Bishop must be feeling. 50 points gone there and the championship oh, right out of the door. And my tip. <laughs> again, again. <laughs> Hard luck there. Outside still. Oh. And next, a rather important moment. This is Ganaza Stefan making his last appearance here at Crossfoot Mew. He's got a marvellous record, hasn't he? Well, this is a very sad moment as well, Peter, because this dog has been to this show for nine consecutive years. He's now 11 and a half years old and has been a wonderful competitor. I do hope that he gets it right this time. Oh, uh, well done, Shelley. Super performance. Right, back to the main contenders. There are three dogs, each with three faults. The first is Limewell Flint. Whoops, that could cost him the championship, that mouthing of that article down the end. Apart from that, he's working very well, Peter. Stops for a shake. Doesn't look madly interested. Well, he's trying. And of course, it does depend what the others do. Well, I've already seen how Magic Sunday, Sonny, went out of the championship by picking the wrong cloth. He's got it. It depends now on what Andy Anderson faults for that mouthing and how Thank he manages you. this present. Finish. And he's been marked with one fault for that exercise. Here's the next challenger, Speedy Kid, also on three faults. This is the dog from Scotland and has done exceptionally well at his first crafts. I'm sure his handler is very pleased with him. Oh dear, that's not the right one, love. So. That's blown out as well. 50 faults for that. A great shame. Speedy Kid goes out. The crowd now really concerned. Can this one, JJ, win the championship? If he does it perfectly, he wins. He can afford half a fault and still win. But one fault will tie him with Limewell Flint. What's Frank thinking at this Frank's moment? Frank's telling him it's the one second from the left. The orange coloured one. We all know dogs are colourblind. <laughs> yeah, but Frank's an old campaigner. Yes, he's got to get that. Well done. Looks faultless so far. Take it. We're looking at the champion. Finish. Thank you. And the crowd know it too, don't you? Yeah, super. Marvellous performance. 